Hey guys, so a friend of mine recently gave me this carburetor out of his 1973 Corvette Stingray. He installed a Holly, so he had no use for this one. And the plan is to rebuild it completely, so stay tuned for a step-by-step -step rebuild series. So first we have to decode the numbers, in this case 704-3203. 704 is 1970 through 1975, the 3 is for 1973, the 2 is for a 4 barrel quadrajet, the 0 is for Chevrolet, and the 3 is for a manual transmission. The date code, or 1093, means that it's the 109th day of 1973, which was a Thursday, April 19th, 1973. This is pretty interesting. Oh, there we go. I think. I think it's because these are kind of bent in. And I think that's what, what is keeping this thing from rotating. Okay, so I, I got it to uh, release. I just it was pretty hard, but it's obvious that it's like a pressure fit there. Once you get it to this point, I guess these two match up and then you can remove the uh, bracket and the solenoid. Okay, so I removed the two flathead screws that secure this air horn and they go in here and then there. Then you have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So all the, the five Five of the screws are the ones that go here, here, and uh, back here, and the one here. They're all the same length. The only different uh, length screws are the, the ones that go all the way in the back here. And of course, the two little ones that I, that I mentioned go inside the, um, the primary opening here. I'm going to give it a few taps just to break the thing loose and next I'm going to remove the uh, little pin here. So this freed up the lever for the accelerator pump. The rod for the um, pump is this one here. Okay, so I figured this thing out. All you have to do is just rotate it. And there's a space in between the idle screw and this uh, base plate. And, uh, just want to line that properly. That's it. Let's see now. So we have accelerator pump. And then what I like to do here, because there's another uh, rod connected to the secondary. I like to rotate it and lift it out of there. So we have the air horn out. Looks pretty, pretty normal. I saw the 
as far as I can tell, the parts got the baffle here. Oh, look at that. This thing is broken. <laughs> Several pieces. load and the needle which which has seen better days that needle is no good it's just some surface rust or dirt really so I'll get out the uh, the seat and the jets, the spring that I mentioned, I think you get a new one when you buy the uh, the rebuild kit um, tube can be taken out for now. These can be a little tricky, but uh, with a big flathead screwdriver, you can carefully align the the tip there and break it free. So here's the seat and it's non-windowed. And there's a little um, gasket down here. And here we have the Screw for the check valve for the acceler accelerator pump. Can't speak today. This is a funky looking screw. As you can see. And there's a little check valve there, which is nothing more than a tiny little, kind of like a, think of it as a little bearing. And let's see about going, removing the uh, the jets. Uh, we're gonna be able to read the numbers. So 70 or 72 or something like that. But again, most um, parts vendors will be helpful and let you know which one your carburetor needs based on the numbers and all of that stuff. Let's see about cleaning this one, see if we can read the numbers. Can't really barely read the numbers. This one clearly says it's a 73. Which again is just I mean anything. Just trying to see what's what's in here. Here's the, uh, the needles, power piston. I should have removed the uh, secondary side. I guess I forgot. This casket actually is somewhat decent, so set it aside. And here we have the power piston the primary needles. I don't have a clue as to the taper or any numbers, but I'll clean them and see what we can ascertain. Overall, it looks pretty decent. I'm just supporting this so I don't So I don't ruin the uh, secondary uh, metering rods. Here they are. These just kind of are just hang from this little aptly named hanger. Let's 
see if we can get the check bolt. Yep. And the spring come out of there. The spring actually is for the for the power piston. I'm pretty sure of that. Yes. Good deal. So and here's the little check ball. Everything seems to work pretty okay, with the exception of this vacuum canister here. So we'll have to look into that later. Oh, and the little cam is in there, good. Very cool, I just, I'm missing a rod, which again is no big deal. This little stop here, out of there, so we don't displace that. This one has been worked on, you can tell usually by how clean they are. It's like someone has been in here. Sometimes it's a good idea to use a, like a putty knife, but again, we're not gonna be saving this thing, of course. And yeah, someone has sealed the, uh, the well plugs. So there you have it. Some pieces now. Once you've done a couple of these, everything kind of starts making sense. And next is gonna to be to uh, finish taking off whatever needs to be removed from here. Separate this, uh, remove this gasket and uh, I'll give it a good cleaning. Okay, so I have the choke pull off bracket and this little canister. I, I put it in the parts washer for, uh, for a good 12 hours. And um, you can buy this piece from any of the Quadrajet parts vendors. But the thing that I'm not clear about is how do you take this little piece out of here? And um, I think there's a couple of um, tabs that hold this in place. And also you have this rod. I was looking at it. I don't know if you can tell there's a little clip back here and there has to be a way to um, take these things apart wow there's a little clip I guess it can be saved and then I can remove this from here and from that thing. What I'm doing is carefully with a punch trying to bend these tabs just enough outward so it gives me some room and I see some movement already happening here. So this piece with the spring and this part of the bracket then is seated all the way in. There we go. Wow. I got it. 
So this is how this is secure in here once you when I, once I install the new one, I want to push it all the way so it bottoms out here against this part of the bracket and then just bend these tabs in a little bit so it kind of locks it in place. Okay, so this is the one that I'm going to have to replace and it kind of doesn't work very well anymore. It's just, it's got all kind of issues. It tries to work and then it doesn't. <laughs> so this is shot. So crazy glue and activator allowed me to repair this filler thing, retainer for the, um, for the float bowl and uh, this was in three pieces and I filed it you know back to um, its original shape doesn't look great but it doesn't look horrible either I was gonna give it some paint and I thought well there's nothing but fuel in here so it was broken when I when I first opened the carburetor so I don't know how they managed that and I know it gets kind of stuck in there a little bit but it's you know it's not a, a huge deal and um, so if, if yours is broken, I guess you can, you can fix them actually. But I really like this um, super glue with, uh, it's almost like, a, yeah, it says right here, gel. And uh, what a difference. Okay, so I soaked this in parts cleaner for about 20, 24 hours and uh, turned out pretty decent actually. I'm very pleased with the results. So what I've decided, I am going to go ahead and replace, or not replace, but install bushings for the main throttle shaft here. The thing here with these shafts, there is a little bit of movement I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, there's quite a bit of play there. I think, you know, I'm, I'm to this point, might as well go ahead and replace uh, or install again. I keep saying replace, install bushings here. The um, secondary shaft, it's pretty snug, so this one on the other hand, you can tell it's just very loose. This one is not. And they, from what I hear, they hardly ever fail. So now to do this, what I, I'm going to do is, because these are these tiny little screws here, you cannot just remove them because they're staked. So, and it's hard to tell, but uh, there is, you can see the tool marks here where they uh, stake them. And what that does, if you start removing them, you're just going to break them. And uh, that is a problem. Then I believe I have to remove this thing here for the, um, yeah, this is the fast idle uh, adjustment. And I think all you need to do is remove the, the spring, hook that, remove this screw. And I think if I figure out how to loosen this rod here, I can take the shaft out, or maybe I'll take them both out. Seems that to remove this portion of the um, main shaft, you have to release this spring. There we go. So that is out of there now. And next, okay. 
Yep, so that spring now is it's all loose. Actually, it would have been easier just to remove this portion of it. But what do I know? Okay. Perfect. This little cam with the spring. And finally, we have this other piece here. It's kind of rotates around this shaft, and that is out. That was enough. It appears to be. There it is. Take this one out. Just for reference, the numbers are toward, toward the secondaries and they're upside down. So that's how you want to reinstall them. I'm going to mark this one right. Then you can remove the shaft from the base plate. Easy peasy.